All right, so to start it, um, I'm in the front viewport. We're going to stay in that front viewport for a little while. Um, and I will start with using a line. Uh, thank you. Oh, okay, so I'm going to start by using a line. I'm in the front viewport. Um, and the key that I'm looking for, and that you would look for in, especially these ones that have got a slight bend in them, is you know that whenever you click, it adds a an edge, right, in the line. So with this one, I know that I want to start at the bottom, obviously, straight line up until here, and then I'm going to curve, and I'm going to put another point in at this point here. And then I want another one at the bottom of where this strip is. One where I can see it starting to curve. So just this section here. Again, at that point there, in the middle of that, um, whatever you would call it, that section. I'm not too bothered about this bend that's here. I'm just going to go straight for the middle of the this straight section again. But I am starting and stopping at the bottom and the top of this bit that I know that's going to jut out. All of this will be make sense in a second. And then straight up to the top, click, right click to end. Okay. Straight away then, we can enable in the viewport. And we've already built that piece relatively quickly. My thing's always come in black, as you know, so I'm just going to grab standard material and throw it on. Then I'm going to right click and turn it into an editable poly. If I press F4, I can then see my edges. Um, <clears throat> I think before I do that, hold on. I don't want that many edges running around the outside, so I'm just going to back up. I've got the line again. Um, I'm going to change the sides to 8 so there's less of them. Fill it again, throw my material back on. Okay. So yeah, if you want to change the, the amount of edges that are running around the object, then it's here. Okay, so whether it's super um, low poly or not. Eight is usually a decent amount um, for something to still look cylindrical. Because even though you can see these edges, when we add smoothing to the object later, you won't see them. There's an eight is enough for it to still look cylindrical when it's in a game. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now, if I right click and turn it back into an editable poly, I can then see that I've got these lines where I wanted them. So I can I can already start making those pieces jut out. So I'll start at the bottom. Um, I'm going to choose polygon select and select this bottom section. Um, just before I do that, I want to straighten this off. I want that to be a straight line as opposed to slightly curved. Now, a quick way of doing that is by selecting them. If you scroll down here, you've got the options here to make plane or to, or to align them to a certain direction. Okay, that It works and it's fine, it's great. And if you remember that, then you can use it. But if you don't, you just want something to very quickly go straight. If you just use the scale tool, and if I scale it in the y-axis, it's got nowhere else to go other than straight, right? So if I scale it up the other way, it will start to bend and go that way, right? But if I scale it down, it will never go the opposite way. It's just a little trick that you can use. Okay, so they're super straight now. Um, back to number four on the keyboard, polygon select. Then I can choose extrude. When I'm extruding, I want to extrude by local normal. So each of those individual polygons are all coming out in one direction. That's too much. So we'll get it to around here. Okay. From there, um, I'm just going to pop into um, perspective mode. So I'm just going to try and model this this front section first. So I want to take these first two, one, two, come back into my front view, and then use extrude again. This time, I just want it to jut out as far as. Um, so I use my finger to point where I'm pointing. Set as far as here. So I want to go to around there. Click the plus, as oh, tick, sorry. Then I'm going to press one on the keyboard so I can affect um, just the verts. So I'm selecting those two, and I know that I'm selecting the ones behind it as well, right? Because it's flat. So now that I've got those two selected, I can pull them and make them level with these ones. 
you could snap them if you wanted to to make them bang on then we'll go back to four on the keyboard which i know has still got this selected okay you can't see it from a side view but i know because it's the last selection that i had it will be this next selection when it's selected again then we're going to do extrude again um we'll probably do it just a couple of times one that's three isn't it that'll do that's fine okay here my object's now covering the image in the background i want to kind of see what i'm doing so if i press alt and x it makes the asset that i've got selected see through okay alt x to do that then i can go back to one on the keyboard so i'm affecting verts and i can just position these where i want them okay i remember these are coming out as one big block at the moment push this one back to here uh, Mike, yes on, um at home, my alt text won't work anymore, it won't make it um, transparent. I can't think of why. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so now I've got this. So I want to start snapping things together. So obviously if I snap this one to here and this one to here, we're already starting the point, right? So I'm just going to go into target world and just start doing that now. So that one's there, that one's there. This one snaps in, that one snaps in. <clears throat> then, in all of these outside sections, and I'm going to scale them in a little. And then the underside, selecting those ones and bringing those in. But I can also bring them with the move tool up. So that creates this point that we want sticking out. <clears throat> Just go in here. Too bad. Okay. Other side, we've got. I'm assuming that's rounded, right? It's a it's a cylinder that's on that section just here, and then a point comes out of it. So there's a little trick that we can use to do that. Um, select these two. I'm going to delete them, and then I'm going to use the space that they've left behind. So instead of using edges or verts, I'm using this one, border. Okay? So it allows me to select all of the outside edge. Then I'm just going to use scale and scale it in to create that new section that I want and pull it out slightly. Then here's a nice little trick. So whenever you have something that's square, but you want to make it cylindrical, you want to turn it into a circle, have outside edge selected, and then choose edge. And then up at the top, because we're using edges, we can change loops. Um, so that's what these are. This is a loop running around. So if I go to loops, loop tools, and then circle, and it creates a circle out of what I had selected. Nice and quick and easy. Scale that in, rotate it slightly so that it isn't doing this kind of weirdness that's going on there at the moment. And then I'm just going to move it out. And then from there, I can create this, this piece here. So we want it to come, just come back to my side view. We want it to come out. And I can come to the side, scale, scale it in. to the front side again move tool holding down shift all the time remember when i'm doing this being able to scale it out like that then i'm going to choose these words here and just weld them all together okay so that's that bottom section done 
there's a few little details here we can come back and add those in later on we just want the kind of the bulk the basis of it in there first okay right carrying on this next bit's easy so we've got a handle here right so again four to hold on to um, polygon select then we're going to choose extrude doesn't need to extrude by that much around here okay that <clears throat> I'm going to create these two little um, rings now so to do that I think I would choose let's get rid of that choosing two on the keyboard which allows me to choose edges and I'm going to connect to make an extra line but I want to add I want to make, make two of them scale them closer together and then push them up to where that top section is this isn't going to be exactly in the right place but be close and then that middle line I double click so I can select it and I can just scale that bit out Done. same goes here Cool. Yeah. Just helping watching. Yeah. Seeing you do these little ticks. Cool. All right. This bit again. Just going to use um, extrude. Ah, okay. Make sure you've got um, polygon selected and not edges when you're extruding. Let's get it out. Done. Okay. It's probably as far as I'd go with the staff section of it. The rest of it, I'll, I'd model as a separate piece. So, cool with that. I'm happy with it. I'm gonna. I'll steal this one and just close it. I'm just gonna move that out of the way because I want to be able to have as much focus on this. I'm just gonna push it to the side. So the top, or the blade, you would do. Um, what have we done with line? With I think we did logos. Did we before? Um, Obviously, when you're, it remembers, Max remembers all of the settings that you had before, so it's going to show me all of this. I don't want to see any of that. Um, so just remember when you go to line to turn off, enable in viewport. Okay, so then, <laughs> like I said, okay. So I'm just going to come, at this point, I know that the blade is just going to stick in. So I'm, I don't really mind too much. I'm not going to stop here because then we'll have a gap. So I'm just going to push it roughly inside. Okay, cool. Let me see. Okay, that's why I darkened it because I knew the white would be hard to see. Okay, so once I've done the line, put it in place. I'm just going to click on modify, and I want to modify the vertices, the individual points. So then we know that this one, right click, turn it into a bezier, and then hold down shift so that we can change just one side at a time. Close enough. Same goes for this one. Oh, that was good. And then maybe just straighten these guys up. So again, to straighten those, I can just use my scale tool and just scale them in one direction. Oh, it's not working on here. Thanks. Bastard. Okay. Do it the other way then. Snap tool on, right click, snap to vertices, and then we can snap it instead. Okay, snap it straight. You could snap all of it if you want it to be bang on. So that's a straight line as well, and that make sure that's a straight line by doing the same thing. Same goes here. Okay, all done. Turn off that modifier list. Come down and find extrude. Then you're going to need to come into a different viewport to see how much you're extruding by. So I'm just going to come into perspective so I can see it. Now, here, how much I extrude it by, I'm kind of thinking, I'm less thinking about the front because we know that's going to taper in anyway. I'm more thinking about the thickness of the back because it's got to go over that. It, it goes over the top of it you see here <clears throat> but what I do want here where you've got segments you want that to be on two so that we've got that central line so we can pull that out 
right? Okay, so with that done, I can right click and collapse the extrude. It always changes it to editable mesh. It's a kind of legacy thing from the old 3D Studio Max. Mesh, you could only ever model in, in mesh before. Um, whereas poly is the, the newer way of modeling. So just switch it, switch it back. Just right click, switch to editable poly. Um, again, I need to just put my texture on. So it's not just pure black. <clears throat> okay, and then from here, um, I guess really I only need to work on one side of it. Um, so I'm going to come into the top viewport. I'm looking down on that axe head. <laughs> Select these verts and delete them. And then I'm going to add symmetry so that I can see what's going on on the other side at all times. So scroll down and find symmetry. Um, again, come into a different viewport so you can see what's going on. Pull that one now. <clears throat> and then make sure your symmetry in the right direction. If there's a gap, grab the mirror and move it. Oh, I've got snaps to it. Okay. Right. Now I can just work on one side and it'll affect the other one for me. So to see what your to see both sides at the same time, I think I've already told you this, you can just click on this show in result. And now I'm working on the orange side. Okay. So first thing, these sections here, all of that can come inwards. This one can move up. This bottom one can move up. And then these sides come in as well. We're going to start welding some of these together anyway, so don't worry if they're kind of in the way or crossing over slightly. This set here, they can all push up, perhaps in. And this one as well. So we're starting to get more of the blade. It's a bit chunky at the minute. Um, so we're going to do a bit of fix up now. So this area here is starting to look a bit messy because they're crossing over. So just use your target weld to fix that up. So that one to that one. Probably even go there to there. That one can go to there as well. Okay. Just going to move some of these in a little more. Okay. <clears throat> going to grab all of the edges, all of these verts that are running along this edge here, apart from that one. Alt to deselect, control to read, to, to add more. Just bring them in because I want that to be less funky. Okay, cool. Right. Finally, looking at it from the right hand side again, you can see where. Remember, I've always told you that you shouldn't have more than four sides. Well, when you have more than four sides, you start seeing these horrible little artifacts and things, right? It, obviously, it's really obvious on something because there's so many sides to this, way more than four. Um, but those are the things that start happening when you go to five or more sides. So that's why I tell you to, to not have it. And a lot of the time, you don't see these problems in 3D Studio Max. It's when you jump into a game engine that they start becoming really obvious. So anyway, that's why you keep things four-sided. Um, clean up here, again, so we're looking at do we need all of these dots to make this shape? Or can we get rid of a few? We can get rid of a few, right? So perhaps that one's not necessary, that one's not necessary, and maybe even that one's not necessary. Hold down control, hit backspace, and we can lose it. On here, perhaps we can just bring this one back and up a little bit to try and keep that look we're going for. Okay. Still roughly doing what we want it to do. So then we need to patch things together, make things that are not four-sided. So the quickest and easiest way of doing that was two ways. One is by selecting verts, one, two, and then hitting connect. Or well, the other way is to do Alt and C on the keyboard, and it will give you a cut tool, which means you can start slicing and dicing using your mouse. Okay. That one there. Let's go here to there.
And remember, because I've got symmetry turned on, whatever I'm doing here is being symmetry on the other side. So they're all now four sides other than this top one. And for that one, I'm actually going to bring a new one up and across the top. this guy back into play Oops. and then those three little spikes that we've got here I'm going to steal this one so I'm going to come into modify select it scroll down and find the word detach and I don't want to detach it by itself I want to detach it as a clone and um, we'll give it a name and we should have a separate model here now called spike which we do notice that the when you detach something it will take the pivot point from the original object so the original pivot point for this staff section is here and the pivot point for my new little spike is there Okay, which is annoying. It means to move it around, I've got to move that point at the top there. So have I shown you how to move pivot points? No. Okay, really, really, really simple. Whatever it is you have selected, over here, this little hierarchy um, logo, click that, and then here it says effect pivot. So effect pivot only, center to the object, turn it back off, and now my pivot's where I want it to be. It's on that object there. Cool. So now I can just move this up. Chuck it where I want it, scale it, one, hold down shift, two, I'll scale that one a little more out. Notice that I'm butting up an edge to where my original model is. Done. Okay. They're the techniques I would use. So they're not. You can use various different techniques to get to that same point, but that's what I would do. That's how I would do. It. Okay, cool, pick an axe and model it. <laughs>